Hello and welcome to my Instagram tricks and tips video. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I use when I'm taking my Instagram photos. So the first thing I want to talk about, one of the most important things that you can do for your photos is lighting. And what I use to get good lighting is A, I take all of my pictures in my kitchen on the hard linoleum because that gives me a nice flat background but also because my kitchen gets probably the most sun of any room in my house. But even then sometimes I don't have the best lighting so what I use is this fun little guy right here. This is a selfie light. It clips to your phone. You can clip it that way but when I use pictures I take it this way. So what this helps with is evening out lighting because I actually do most of the pictures for my account are taken on my phone. It's just got this little button that you click to change the brightness. So I will show you how that impacts So that's one of the things that I use probably the most uh, for my Instagram just to make sure that I have the best lighting. You do have to be careful if you're taking a picture of a screen or of something like this because as you notice sometimes it shows up. You can see there so you just have to make sure you keep your light where it doesn't do that. You also want to avoid glare on books and pins. Next one of the things that my account photographs are best known for that is a big part of my theme is going to be the origami and paper decorations. I have a lot of different origami looking decorations. There's different little paper stars. They're 3D. I have a lot of these little stars um, and I like to use them just to lay flat in pictures. I have flowers like these. These are all just made out of scrapbook paper. I did most of this in an evening. So I just use these to get some color into my pictures. And then finally, these are just little flowers that I bought in a scrapbook store. One thing that I find myself wanting to do sometimes that's not always easy is to show both the cover and something on the inside of the book. It might be an author signature, or in this case, it's the art on the inside cover. So unless you have two copies of the book, and I don't have two copies of Kingdom of Ash, that might seem like something that's hard to do. But what I end up doing is you want to take the book with the stuff on the inside, you want it without the cover, and then you need to find another book that's very close in size. The one I have that's closest is A Court of Mist and Fury. So you're going to take the cover off A Court of Mist and Fury. And you're going to go over here and you're going to put that cover on Kingdom of Ash. So now you have Kingdom of Ash. And you can have your inner cover. And you basically can't tell the difference. Another thing that seems to be pretty popular is making book crowns. Um, so this is just how I do mine. I recommend taking this cover off because if you don't, you're going to be battling with it and it's not always fun. So you want to find about the halfway point of your book. It doesn't have to be perfect. But here is Kingdom of Ash. And just kind of start folding pages. You don't want each section. I try to go for three or four pages. So there's three or four. Sometimes it's fun to have a couple of pages not folded. So we're going to leave these not folded, fold that. And I know I said before that you want three or four pages in each little section. But it doesn't matter so much as long as you kind of have the same number of pages in each section. 
And I'm actually going to change this so I just have one in the middle instead of two because I think that'll look better. And if you want bigger loops, you can take these pages that we've left loose and kind of tuck them very, very loosely. I recommend doing that last because those pages aren't going to stay very well. So it doesn't look like much from the top, but if I show you the side, it looks really, really cool. Sometimes I like to use writing in my pictures, and there's two ways that I typically do that. The first way is with Scrabble letters. So there are those. The second way is with a um, marquee board or whatever you want to call this. Now this is technically battery powered and you can turn on the light but I find that it doesn't show up well in pictures if you do that. See, I just, it takes away a lot from the picture and it causes everything around it to adjust and dim, so I like it to be turned off. Sometimes when I'm using my marquee board, I don't have all of the letters or symbols that I want, so what I do in that case is I take this one that is just a plain piece that came as an extra uh, the idea of it is that you can write on it with Sharpie, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to ruin it. So I just slide it on like that, and then I go back in Photoshop later and add whatever symbol it is that I need. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to have things that appear to be handwritten, but my handwriting isn't exactly legible. So what I will do instead of that is I will just take a picture of whatever and go back in Photoshop later and add text. One of the things that I use possibly the most in my photos is this stuff. You use it sometimes for putting posters on the wall. I mostly find it in either an art and craft aisle or wherever they put picture hanging supplies. So what I use this for is to make things lay flat. Like, see, this wants to roll around, and this kind of bounces. So to make the candle lay flat, we're going to take a little bit of our putty, and we're going to roll it, and then we're going to take this, and we're going to roll it. You want two similar sized pieces, but they don't have to be identical. Now a quick note, you always, always want to stick the putty to an object, not to your backing because it's very difficult to get off your backdrop. Unless you have a paper backdrop, then it's a little bit easier. So you want to kind of find the midpoint of your candle so you have it exactly upside down, and then you're just going to take the putty and stick it. So there we have our putty. About here is our midpoint, so I'm actually going to move him over a little. And if you lay it down and you notice it's not the way you wanted, you just kind of roll there. Ta-da! So the way this comes in handy with enamel pins is, here's a bigger lump of the putty. We're going to break off a little, roll it. You want this roll to be about the size of the back on your pin. So we're going to put that there. Take a little, roll it, put it there. You can see it's all about the same size, and it still is not flat. That's easy to fix. Just take a little bit more, stick it in that corner. Sometimes I manage to do this with only two pieces of putty, but in this case it looks like I needed three. But it makes your pin lay much, much more flat than it did to begin with. If for some reason you get a little bit of putty stuck to the back, don't try and peel it off with your fingernails. Just take another putty, warm it up in your hand, and do this. And the putty will eventually all stick to itself. So let's say you want to take a picture of your phone screen. There's two options for this, pretty much. 
You can either just put the book cover or whatever it is you're taking a picture of. I just say book cover because a lot of times when I read e-arcs, I just do this to take a picture of it to talk about it. You can either do this, but then you see you end up with reflections. That is my camera that you're seeing right now. Um, so that doesn't always work, but you would just lay it down and then put whatever around it and take the picture. Your other option is to just take a picture of the black and then later go in in Photoshop and add in your picture, cover, whatever it is that you want. So lastly, I'm going to talk about this. This is my photo backdrop. It's a sort of vinylish plastic. You can get them on Amazon, eBay. You can probably find them at a store. So um, when you get them, sometimes they're folded up and then they have creases. Uh, the best way to get rid of those creases is just to iron it on a very, very low temperature very patiently. And then storing it is the other problem. If you just fold it up to store it, you're going to have to iron it every time you want to use it. So I keep mine rolled. And the way I do that is this is the bottom of my thing. And as you can see, I took a wrapping paper roll and I just ran some tape so that this is attached to the wrapping paper roll. So then whenever I'm done with it, I just roll it up. And then I can just put it out of the way. So that's my Instagram tips and tricks video. I hope you found something that interests you or that you will find useful. If you've got any tips of your own, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much.